All right. Okay. Uh, good morning or good afternoon. Yes, it's it depends. It's a pleasure to be with you, and it's a pleasure to join Horace's webinar once again. I've been attending a uh, few of the Horace's uh, before, seminars before, in person. This is the first time I go, we go on a webinar. Anyway. Yes, uh, 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 Mr. I will start intro introducing everybody uh, just for a few minutes, and then I will start. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, delegates of Horasis Asia meeting, and dear Dr. Frank Richter, chairman of Horasis. And we are starting our session, which is dedicated to the greater Caspian region. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like uh, to clarify or explain what does it mean, Greater Caspian Region? And uh, this term was invented uh, four years ago uh, when we started the Caspian Week conference in Davos uh, because uh, before, mainly our region was called Eurasia uh, in the international level, which I think is not uh, so much relevant because Eurasia in some languages, in some cultures, it's uh, Europe and Asia. In some cultures, it is uh, uh, space between Europe and Asia. And, uh, and uh, we invented the term uh, Greater Caspian Region, uh, and which includes uh, Caspian Sea uh, and surrounding countries, Black Sea and surrounding countries, and Central Asia, including Afghanistan and North of Pakistan. And uh, uh, we are talking about 5 million uh, square kilometer area, and with 500 million people living there. Uh, now, uh, I would like to introduce our speakers today. Uh, some of them are from the region, uh, some of them from outside the region, uh, but all of them, they have extensive experience and uh, relations with the Greater Caspian Region. And uh, I'm Murat Sietnipesov. Uh, I am the president of uh, Greater Caspian Association and chairman of the organizing committee of Caspian Week in Davos. Uh, I'm originally from Turkmenistan, from the region, exactly from the region, but living and working in Switzerland already for more than 10 years. Uh, now I would like to introduce our speakers. Uh, we will start with uh, Ferial Mostofi. Uh, she is uh, from Iran, and she's a member of the board of Iran-China Chamber of Commerce. Also, uh, she is uh, involved in the various chambers of commerce, like uh, Tehran Chamber of Commerce. Uh, she is the chairman of the Investment Commission of Iran Chamber of Commerce. Uh, and Foreign Investment Committee of Tehran Chamber of Commerce and the uh, Investment Commission of Iran Chamber of Commerce. And uh, also she is a successful businesswoman. Uh, she is chair, uh, chairwoman uh, woman of the company KDD Group. Uh, and uh, we are very happy uh, to welcome uh, Ferial here because uh, we don't have so many delegates from Iran for the last years. And uh, especially because uh, she is a woman and that she is representing really the best, beautiful part of Iranian society. And uh, uh, we are very happy to see you here. Uh, now, uh, Marco Pasalia, uh, she, he is from Switzerland. He is a member of the parliament of Canton Ticino. Uh, also, he is a secretary general of Lugana Commodity Trading Association. And uh, he is also a successful businessman. He is a partner of the company Annet SA, which is involved in the natural gas trading. Now we are waiting for Dr. Claude Biglé. Uh, he is uh, trying to join our session, uh, but I think he will su succeed. Uh, he is also from Switzerland. He is the president of the Symbio Swiss, uh, chairman of the Swiss China Wall Silk Road Association and former member of the National Council, Swiss National Parliament. And uh, waiting for Linar Yakupov. Uh, he is from Russia. Uh, he is advisor to the Prime Minister of Republic of Tatarstan in Russia. And uh, he is uh, uh, the main expert in the Islamic finance in Russia. He studied this and then he worked in that field for many, many years. Okay, uh, now, uh, I would like to give a floor to our speakers, and I would like to invite uh, the young uh, And uh, the main question which I would like to ask, uh, she is uh, intensively involved in the Chamber of Commerce uh, and the Industry, and, uh, and uh, she, she is a great specialist on the international trade and business, and I would like uh, to ask for your opinion. 
in this today's disrupted world because of the coronavirus, because of political turbulence in the region especially. Uh, what could be done and how to develop trade between Caspian Sea countries and particularly uh, with Iran and with Asia? Because here we are, we are on the Forites Asia meeting. And uh, a lot of connections were disrupted because of the coronavirus pandemic. And now how to do trade in a sustainable way and what could be the role of the chambers of commerce? And the second question I would like uh, her to highlight is the legal status convention of the Caspian Sea. Because she is from Iran. Iran is the one of the five, only five literal states of the Caspian Sea. Please, Ephraim, the floor is yours. All right. Okay, thank you very much. Good evening or good afternoon, everybody. Once again, I think Morat has uh, introduced me, so I don't need to introduce myself again. I'm uh, quite active in the Chamber of Commerce as well as my own private company. Uh, now, uh, well, today I think uh, my speech is going to be, uh, I will tell you a little bit about the Caspian Sea. I will say something about the potential of Iran, my country. And uh, then I will let you know a little bit about the role of Chamber of Commerce. Uh, so, the Caspian Sea is the largest lake in the world, as we all know, and is uh, bordered with five countries. Uh, and it is uh, bounded to land and does not have any connection to water, world water. Uh, the coastline of Iran is about 750 kilometers. Uh, well, undoubtedly, the Caspian Sea plays an important role in the region, especially for the dry weather climate of Iran, because, uh, we, I mean, Iran is uh, really a dry climate. Annually, about 600,000 tons of the fish are caught every year uh, in the Caspian water, uh, so that plays an important role uh, in the financial turnover of uh, and the economy of the region. The Caspian Sea is a huge uh, source of hydrocarbon. Now I would like to tell you about some potential of my country. From the political point of view, uh, Iran qualifies from different aspects to be an excellent location for investment and doing business. Of course, once we overcome these problems of the sanction problem. Uh, well, Iran is in a strategic location, a unique uh, geographical location at the heart of the crossroad connecting Middle East, Asia, and Europe. It's a market potential. You know, we have, we have a big population, about 80 million people. It's a market potential, vast domestic market with a quick access to neighboring markets of, uh, I would say the marketing neighbors, we have something about the population of 600 million all around. Uh, we have a labor privilege, large pool of trained and efficient manpower at a very competitive cost. We have developed infrastructure in the areas such as telecommunication, power, water, roads, railways across the country, low utility and production costs, abundant resources, natural resources. Well, we have about 68 uh, different products of mineral in Iran, from uh, the iron ore to copper, lead, zinc, and so on, okay? Uh, so, it's a very good uh, legislation for investment. And uh, the other thing which I can say is a prime transit position between the Caspian Sea in the north and the Persian Gulf on the south. Uh, this location is very important. As I explained before, uh, Caspian Sea is, uh, uh, doesn't have any access to free water. 
So Iran can be a very good location for transiting and transportation uh, of the products from the Caspian Sea towards the Persian Gulf and uh, Oman Sea. Uh, you know, I mean, countries like India, Afghanistan, all this, they require a lot of energy, which can easily be done uh, through the, you know, uh, land of Iran. Uh, well, in Iran, I tell you, Iran has been um, done a, made a great advances in economic and social development. Successfully, we have been transitioning from a planned economy into a market economy and found the development path fit for its natural condition. Now I'll tell you a little bit, uh, I don't know how, how much did I spend, but anyway, I'll let, tell you a little bit about the role of Chamber of Commerce. You know, Iran Chamber of Commerce, which is mother, is a uh, parliament or private sector. We have more than uh, 50,000 members. Uh, and Tehran Chamber of Commerce, uh, which is the largest chamber in the country with over 19,000 members, and contributing about 40% uh, to the GDP, of, to the share of the G GDP of the country. Uh, the economic era of the JCPO, uh, which Frank visited Iran, uh, led to the establishment of the investment center at Tehran Chamber of Commerce, uh, with the aim for facilitate foreign investment. I would like to tell you a little bit what we do in the uh, investment uh, center. Considering Iran today economic environment, we are strongly looking forward to strengthen our mutual cooperation with the international community and especially with our neighbors. At the investment center, we have come to realize the importance of having more dynamic and interactive private sector in our economy in order to achieve prosperity. As the president of the investment center of the Tehran Chamber of Commerce, I would like hereby to share some of the center missions with you. Providing a platform for networking cooperation, sharing, and dissemination of the ideas and information, providing consultation to investors whom to want to invest, whom are attracting investment, outline Iran current landscape for investment attraction. And we, have, we do have training courses. After the JCPO, we did in the center, we did sign some memorandum of understanding with uh, some uh, very famous uh, consultancy companies such as fortunately uh, um, you know after the uh, problem uh, which America uh, left JCPO uh, and put uh, lots of sanctions on Iran so mostly most of the countries that have stopped doing business and actually this is, this is the situation that you know our economy has been suffering and especially nowadays because of the coronavirus uh, well I would say the growth of the economy in all over the world has been fallen especially I mean imagining Iran with such a uh, big problems of the sanction which we are facing so the system but anyway we are hoping, uh, as Murat said before, uh, we are hoping maybe in a, a very short period of time we can catch up because you know, Iran is a, quite a rich country and I'm sure we'll, uh, we shall be able to catch up. Thank you. So, if I can may I say something. Yes, uh, thank you for the interesting information. So especially I was excited about the Foundation the Investment, Investment Center with, uh, under the Chamber of Commerce. And it means that Iran is uh, open for the foreign investments. 
Also, you touch a little bit uh, transit issues because Iran is uh, really one of the few crossroads. Uh, it's a north-south transit corridor. There is east-west transit corridor going through the Greater Caspian region. And uh, also, Iran is not only oil. Iran, uh, there are also a lot of mineral resources in the country. Uh, and uh, uh, we all very hope that uh, Iran will be reintegrated in the world economic uh, system and uh, all sanctions uh, will be lifted uh, as soon as possible. And uh, we really uh, wish you great success uh, to you and uh, your Chamber of Commerce and your initiatives and, uh, to, to your country. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mario. Uh, now I would like... Uh, to invite uh, Marco Pasalia. Uh, as I told already, he's uh, uh, a politician. Uh, he's a very successful businessman. Uh, he's also uh, General Secretary of Lugano Commodity Trading Association. Uh, and his, uh, uh, his company, Enet SA, uh, is one of the biggest uh, independent natural gas traders in the South Europe. He's based in Lugano in Switzerland, and uh, I would like to ask him to share his views uh, on the several topics. Uh, all we know that uh, natural gas reserves uh, of the Greater Caspian region uh, is more than half of the world reserves. Uh, let's say to Russia uh, has first biggest uh, natural gas reserves, uh, Iran is second biggest, and Turkmenistan is the fourth biggest. And on top of this, uh, there are significant natural gas reserves uh, in Uzbekistan and in Kazakhstan. And uh, natural gas is the best and the most ecological and climate-friendly for fossil fuel, which is available for today. It's much better to use natural gas than uh, coal or crude oil or petroleum products. It's uh, several times uh, uh, better, less emission, several times less emission. And uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, reserves of natural gas. Now, how to move this gas out from the region and uh, how to monetize this gas and how to deliver this gas to the regions where uh, people really need it. I can talk about India, for example. All we know about the ecological situation in India, they are still burning coal uh, and uh, also China. China, also, although they are reducing a lot coal, uh, using coal, but uh, also natural gas is very important for China. And for example, Turkmenistan is the biggest uh, exporter of natural gas to China for today. Uh, and uh, I would like Marco to highlight the following topics. First, importance, importance of the natural gas production in the Greater Caspian region. Second, the potential of the natural gas export. Uh, from Caspian region and possible limits for this export. And third one uh, is the challenges of the Greater Caspian region after signing of the Legal Status Convention of the Caspian Sea. Please, Marco. Thank you. Thank you for this warm and uh, kind uh, welcome. It's uh, my pleasure to, to, to be here to today for this uh, webinar, this conference, and, and uh, thank you. It was very interesting also. Uh, what um, the previous guest uh, said to us, and I really hope so much that we will have soon opportunity to uh, get in touch and talk business again with Iran. Um, let's say that, uh, Murat, you, you asked me for a difficult task in a few minutes, but uh, I will try somehow as a politician, but also as an entrepreneur to, let's say, to sum up uh, uh, main uh, points. So it's uh, Marco, you, you will have a little bit more time, looks like, because uh, two other speakers still struggling to enter the platform. That's why, <laughs> please go ahead. Okay, you know, normally for a politician, it's not that difficult to, to talk more than what he needs, but uh, I will try to be more entrepreneur today, yeah? and so get straight to, to my points. Thanks. Um, so it's, first of all, important to, to remember that... Uh, as a tradition, Caspian region is probably one of the really oldest oil producing areas in the world. And uh, if we go back into history, we, we can uh, read a lot about that. But it's very important now to uh, focus the attention not just on the energy production from the Caspian region, 
But generally speaking, uh, th this is for sure the, the important topic of the last time, uh, I would say, uh, 20 years. But I think that today or in these recent years, more than before, um, the focus is, is really on, on uh, natural gas. Natural gas also because uh, uh, there are uh, very important natural gas resources, both onshore in several countries and uh, offshore, uh, talking about Caspian, Caspian Sea. So my, my first point that I, uh, let's say, would like to, to uh, highlight is, is the importance of, of uh, all uh, this, uh, this area. And um, uh, I could give you numbers of uh, billions of cubic meters, but I think it's uh, less important because uh, everybody can, can read that uh, and Google these, these numbers and, and find interesting numbers. I think it's more important maybe um, uh, to remember uh, that gas, natural gas, today and in the near future um, will play a more important role. And uh, for this reason, all the Caspian region can play also a very important role. So uh, we know that uh, on, the, on the one side, in, in particular, um, Azerbaijan and Kazakhstan have um, a big part of oil resources in the, in the Caspian Sea, in the Caspian Basin they have there. But on the other side, we can say that natural gas uh, resources are relevant for all countries present in the region. And that's uh, very interesting also uh, talking about the, the treaty you, you mentioned during your introduction. So just to give you uh, a better idea, uh, let's enter a little bit more into details. So um, let's say that uh, we, we know or it's well known that biggest discovered natural gas fields are uh, onshore in Turkmenistan, you mentioned that, in Kazakhstan, but also in uh, Uzbekistan and uh, offshore also in, in Azerbaijan. And uh, of course, um, Russia and Iran have also very important interest talking about uh, natural gas, uh, in particular in, in, in the sea. Uh, most of the Azerbaijan's and Kazakhstan uh, production are or come from the, the middle northern Caspian basins. And um, uh, let's say that uh, most of uh, Azerbaijan production is also uh, offshore. Interesting also uh, uh, to say that uh, in, in comparison with um, Kazakhstan and Azerbaijan, uh, Turkmenistan has also a different position because of um, uh, the gas reserves onshore and uh, just a, a smaller amount, uh, smaller volumes of, of gas are potentially uh, the, in, in, the, in the Caspian Sea. So uh, talking about, uh, let's say, this is generally speaking about uh, also the interest, uh, talking about net gas of, of uh, uh, all countries around uh, the Caspian Sea. Uh, of course, uh, Iran and, and Russia that I mentioned before. And uh, what, in my opinion, is very important is to uh, understand the role of the Caspian uh, region in a geopolitical and uh, a global economic interest. Uh, because the, the potential um, of this region, talking about um, energy production, is huge. It's huge, and uh, considering the fact that it's very important, is also uh, very geopolitical, very strategic. Talking about the potential, of course, uh, I would say that there is um, the, the, the historical, traditional export of um, um, these products to European markets. And in, in the past, this was done uh, in, in particular with uh, uh, using uh, Russian infrastructure, Russian pipelines network. And uh, now we start seeing new opportunities uh, turn up and, you know, also uh, is starting in these days also a tap from um, uh, Azerbaijan, uh, Turkey, Turkey going to, uh, to Italy and, uh, for instance, into the uh, European market. Of course, uh, now it's even more important uh, and more strategic what can be, could be potentially exported from uh, uh, this area to East Asia market, to Southern Asian market, but also, of course, to, uh, uh, to Turkey or uh, also in this uh, particular uh, period, 
um, uh, to Iran, knowing a little bit also the activity of um, uh, swap uh, uh, done in, in Iran. Of course, when I talk about uh, exports, and I mean um, net gas uh, through uh, pipeline and gas infrastructure, and liquid natural gas and LNG cargos is, is a, a very different topic uh, because uh, the problem now is, and uh, Murad knows that very well, is the presence of uh, pipeline and infrastructure which um, uh, can support this kind of exportation. Because on the one side, we have uh, pipelines already working. Uh, we have pipelines under construction. But on the other side, we have uh, also uh, pipelines which potentially could be built in the next, uh, in the next uh, uh, years. But this is a very, once again, geopolitical um, issue. Uh, of course, uh, when I when I mean uh, when I talk about the potential of the region, I, I don't uh, I don't mean just natural gas itself uh, that from the region is exported, but I also mean uh, the potential uh, processing activity of uh, natural gas in the region to uh, transform to uh, produce other interesting interesting products. For example, everybody today is talking about hydrogen, but not everybody is talking about the production of hydrogen. And that's a very uh, important issue. Uh, this is the potential, and, and the potential is, is huge because uh, uh, there is uh, also a domestic use of, uh, of gas. There is also um, a use in terms of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, substitution of um, gasoline and um, uh, gasoline for, for example, for trucks using uh, uh, natural gas or LNG. This is something that it's already happening in the uh, United States, which is already happening uh, in Europe, is already happening in uh, Asia, but in um, a few Asian countries like uh, Japan, China, and, and um, uh, South Korea. But I believe that uh, the potential has, has really several uh, very, very clear limitations. Um, on the one side, geopolitics. And uh, I think that it's very important, the fact that um, a couple of years ago, the Convention on Legal Status of the Caspian Sea was signed by neighbor uh, countries. And uh, I think this is very important also to, to give a, a, a clear message to the rest of the world that um, in this area there is a, a potential uh, positive economic development, but also um, a trend to uh, secure the, the whole region. But uh, of, co of course, we know that this, this treaty uh, has still uh, uh, several issues to, 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 be, to be solved, but at least, uh, uh, let's say, um, could already give the basis to, to, to start uh, also new negotiation and to start a clear, um, uh, a clear um, situation in the area. So uh, I said that uh, limits are represented by geopolitics, but um, of course uh, it's essential also the, the security in the region because if you have security and this treaty for sure can support security, uh, you can also attract investment. You can attract uh, um, in, in particular, foreign investor, foreign uh, uh, huge companies uh, which are interested in, in uh, building infrastructure, in building um, several uh, also processing plants and production. I think that uh, once you, you, you have a, a more secure area, you have also a more um, interesting uh, business-friendly area and this uh, can really uh, support. And just uh, to, to, to sum up, I, I think I'm, I'm getting uh, to, to 10, 10 uh, minutes, so I, I don't want to be too, too, too long on that. I think that, uh, generally speaking, the potential is big. I believe that uh, this region can play a more important role. Uh, I believe that also the rest of the world uh, should pay more attention in uh, this area and to respect more also uh, this area. 
And uh, at the same time, I also believe that there are uh, relevant challenges. Relevant challenges, uh, once again, uh, talking about security, we all uh, uh, saw what happened in the, the uh, Azerbaijan-Armenia conflict, uh, Nagorno-Karabakh uh, um, issue, uh, which is a very old story, actually. It's, not, it's nothing new, but a very old story, which uh, gave a little bit of uh, instability in that area. The other challenge is for sure infrastructure, because we have to be able to export products from the area. We have to be um, uh, in the position to uh, have a clear uh, logistic, uh, uh, logistic uh, project in that area. And uh, once again, uh, this bring, all these bring uh, internal and foreign investment. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Marco. Uh, very optimistic speech, and uh, we see that there is a great interest for the natural gas uh, from the Greater Caspian region in Europe and in Switzerland. Uh, from my side, I would like uh, to add uh, that maybe one of the possible solutions really is, like told Mark already told, is really to increase the processing of the natural gas and uh, in the region, right on the side. And uh, we know that uh, in Iran there is a big uh, gas processing industry already existing and they're building new uh, plants for this. Also, we know that in Turkmenistan, uh, one GTL plant was built and uh, one gas to polymer plant already was built and they uh, started operation one or two years ago. Now, Uzbekistan working on this and uh, uh, there is a giant project for processing uh, uh, natural gas into the uh, liquids, petroleum liquids, and also for the polymers, uh, and one proje project already operating. I think this is uh, one of the possible solutions uh, that uh, we all we know that uh, uh, our region, unfortunately, not easy, uh, not easy to handle, and uh, uh, we have uh, uh, hidden conflicts in the region. That's why it's, it's a big barrier for the foreign investments to the region, but uh, with, slowly, slowly, over the time, these uh, barriers are uh, being passed by the investors. Uh, and um, uh, to build the natural gas export infrastructure is a ge geopolitical issue, but to build the gas processing industry, you can do inside the country. The, and the geopolitical factor is not so important here. And uh, I think uh, it could be a combination of both. And... Um, uh, also, uh, some new technologies could be uh, implemented in the region, like hydrogen production and so on. There are all natural elements already existing there. Uh, and thank you, Marco, again. Uh, our two missing speakers still trying to connect. Okay, we see the attempts, but looks like <laughs> not, not very successful. Uh, and uh, But we are anyhow waiting for them. We still have time, uh, another 12-15 minutes in the session. Uh, but meanwhile, I would like uh, to ask uh, additional questions from the speakers. Uh, let's start from uh, Ferel, uh, and then uh, we will go with uh, Marco. Uh, and the question is, uh, what are the most pressing needs for of the Greater Caspian region, in your view? Yeah, well, um, more or less, I think uh, one of the most important issues on the Caspian Sea is the environment pollution, which uh, is, um, it really requires the cooperation between all the Caspian Sea states. Uh, because since, uh, the, since the extraction of energy resources, uh, this uh, place has become very polluted, especially, I tell you, because of the uh, pollution, especially, I mean, coming from Azerbaijan and Kazakhstan, mostly is coming toward Iran, according to the information I have. So really, that place has got really polluted. And here, uh, I think all the parties, they have to join together, okay? in order to have a very good program in order to uh, solve this problem and control this pollution. Otherwise, uh, it's going to be a disaster. Uh, though definitely the extraction of oil and gas is very important, but I think the environment is more important. 
Here I would like, if I may, put uh, three questions. Uh, maybe Mark can answer me. Um, do the Caspian states face common and non-common environment uh, problem arising from the specific situation of the Caspian Sea? What common policies have this country followed so far to solve these problems? And the third one is, what are the weakness and shortcoming of this common policies and what solution can be proposed to address these shortcomings. So to my point of view, I think environment is a big issue which has to be taken. And of course, the security is also is very important. Thank you, Fidel. Yeah, I would like to comment that uh, uh, we are cooperating with, uh, there is another convention uh, on the ecological status of the Caspian Sea called Tehran Convention. And uh, here in Geneva, they have the headquarters uh, under the United Nations umbrella, and uh, they are dealing and, uh, with the ecological issues of the Caspian Sea and trying to improve the situation. And uh, we had several very fruitful discussions with them. Uh, I think uh, that on the United Nations side, already some things are being moved uh, on the ecological uh, issues of the Caspian Sea. And uh, I think uh, what we need here, more involvement from the countries of the Caspian Sea itself. And, and otherwise, of course, uh, uh, we should uh, prepare our region for the future, for the next generations also, for the future. And uh, doing pollution uh, and creating ecological problem, it's uh, very damaging. It, also on the regional side, also on the global side. Because if the uh, Caspian region uh, can produce so much natural gas and uh, crude oil, then uh, it's also very important on the global uh, side with the climate change, with ecological issues and so on. Uh, luckily, because of the coronavirus, uh, everybody forgot about ecology because now again air in our cities uh, became clean. And uh, I saw especially in spring when uh, some Indians they were sending uh, pictures on the YouTube and so on that now they can see finally the mountains. They're <laughs> like... Because no cars, no pollution, and so on. But uh, coronavirus will be uh, over. A coronavirus uh, pandemic will be over, and then we'll come back again to the ecology. And let's prepare for this. I fully agree with Virial. Uh, this is very important, uh, and for the Greater Caspian region, and for the for our world. Okay, Marco, please. Uh, Thank you. Uh, thank you for, for the questions. I, I, I believe that it, um, today um, a bit much easier than a few years ago also to pay more attention on, on uh, environmental issues, on, uh, let's say, more sustainability in, in business. Um, on, for sure, uh, because of uh, the new support that comes from, from new support that comes from, from uh, uh, many countries. We see what happened in, in the um, um, United States, what happened in, uh, um, also because of COVID, what um, is happening in Europe, what is happening also in, uh, in China and, and Japan and, and so on. I think that um, it's uh, uh, also pretty normal to understand that um, if you can see um, a, a business opportunity in a, uh, let's say, more sustainable technology, um, you will do it. And I, I believe also, now I'm talking more as an entrepreneur, uh, that uh, this is the right moment. This is the right moment because uh, uh, even uh, politics, even uh, uh, new uh, national and international rules are um, somehow supporting this kind of uh, and uh, new technology. Just a, an, an example, uh, we talked about hydrogen because everybody's talking about hydrogen. It's, it's very interesting to, to understand how uh, hydrogen is produced. Most of this product is, is, is uh, about 70, 75% is, is produced from um, uh, processing activity of natural gas. Um, so this means that it's not a completely clean uh, product. But in any case, it's cleaner than uh, other uh, products, other commodities used up to now. And uh, 
this is in any case positive. We we have to to see at the uh, sustainable uh, change, at the sustainability change as a, a progressive uh, path to 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 a final aim. And uh, I think that you cannot ask uh, companies, you cannot ask people uh, to change uh, uh, dramatically from today to tomorrow uh, because this doesn't work. But you you have to start with small incentives. You you have to start with uh, uh, subventions. You have to start also to somehow uh, support, uh, in particular, um, all uh, investors in really believing that there is a, uh, also uh, an economic benefit. And I'm, I'm trying to be, in this case, more as, as a, in, uh, the, the, the first economist used today, used to, used to say, like, uh, uh, homo economicus. So uh, uh, see, I'm seeing uh, the issue of uh, environmental change, uh, uh, from climate change, from, uh, let's say, uh, a very economic point of view. So if, if you have benefits, if you have uh, also kind of uh, subventions or uh, positive be- beneficial uh, rules, and then you can, uh, you can really uh, speed up all the process to, to um, a, a better uh, environment, uh, a, a better climate change or a quicker climate change. I, and I conclude just this, this topic. I, I believe that uh, in any case, um, going back to our uh, main uh, uh, object, which is the Caspian area. I believe that um, so treaties are uh, important, but uh, I think that all the uh, Caspian uh, community, uh, decision makers of the Caspian community have uh, to talk, uh, have to, um, let's say, exchange uh, more um, uh, policies on uh, uh, also not just business, but business with uh, a clear environmental uh, uh, plan. That's uh, uh, maybe the main message that I can give, so uh, better uh, communication among all Caspian Sea countries. Thank you, Marco. Uh, Like you told, yes, new technologies are very important for the region, and the business and legal infrastructure also very important and uh, also environment, like Ferrell already told. And uh, thank you for these comments. Uh, from my side, I would like to add that, in my view, uh, the most important thing which is needed for our region is a peace and stability. And uh, we all saw the recent uh, development of the situation uh, with Nagorno-Karabakh, and uh, where all of us were really happy that uh, finally the peace reigned over this land on 9th of uh, uh, November, and there's... Uh, uh, the fire agreement was finally signed, and uh, uh, it's opening a lot of doors and uh, for the foreign investments, and uh, not only for that region but also for the uh, for the Greater Caspian region itself. And uh, the second uh, uh, big problem which we have in our region is Afghanistan, and uh, we see that uh, a lot of progress uh, was made in the Afghanistan peacemaking process but still is very far from uh, the resolution of the situation. And uh, uh, is the, if uh, in Afghanistan there will be no peace and no stability, then we should forget about foreign investment, we should forget about uh, effective foreign trade and transit and so on. That's why we sh- all of us we should concentrate, uh, I mean the greater Caspian region and the communities and the, go- the countries, the governments and the international organizations should concentrate to establish a peace and stability in the region. Uh, this, uh, I think we are 50 seconds left time from our session. Unfortunately, our friends, Dr. Bigle and uh, Lenaria Kupov, they still, they're still trying, but they were not able to join the session. Mm-hmm. Maybe Murat, Murat, sorry for interrupting. If I can, if I can give a short message, it's just also the fact that uh, what you are doing uh, with the Greater Caspian Association is a very important, uh, uh, really activity, very important for the region, and I hope that uh, all these uh, the initiative uh, uh, that you started uh, can also support uh, a better communication and understanding in the region. I'm sure uh, you can uh, still do uh, a lot for, for the region. Thank you. for uh, Thank you, Marco. 
And uh, also, I would like uh, to add a couple of words about the potential role of Switzerland in the development of the Greater Caspian region. Uh, because it was a topic from Dr. Bigle, but I will take a liberty and uh, uh, tell something about this topic also. Uh, Switzerland is uh, very far away from the Greater Caspian region, but Switzerland is very connected to our region. And uh, we can start from Iran, uh, we can talk a lot, but uh, uh, Switzerland is a bridge now for Iran uh, between the uh, uh, between the Western world and the country. And uh, Switzerland, for example, Swiss embassy is uh, dealing with all American issues in Iran because there is no direct American presence. And uh, also, I traveled a lot uh, in the in our region, in the Greater Caspian region, and I saw how good and really excellent relations uh, Switzerland has with all these countries, starting from Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan.